Good morning, Tim, will be present. We will present the progress report from his recent high performance leadership project, in which he created a YouTube video to promote his knowledge and skill as a YouTube instructor. Here, with insight into what projects and practices can be avoided at all costs, please welcome Tim Lewis with How to Win Friends and Stream Video. Please help me welcome Tim. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Just to catch everybody up, a few weeks ago, I started my final high performance leadership so I can achieve, hopefully, the DTM award before time runs out at the end of the month. We're I'm this close. Hopefully, we're going to get there. We'll see. And for my high performance leadership project, you're supposed to put together a team of people who will work together and using all the, the many, many skills you've developed over years as a Toastmaster, you're going to use it to inspire them to lead them, and then to hopefully get them to come together and present in a way that you can use to promote a business or a charity or some sort of fundraiser, something along those lines. So my idea was an idea that I've had since day one of coming to Toastmasters. Originally, I was thinking, you know what, I should look into putting on photography workshops. I should take the skills I learned here at Toastmasters and apply them to sharing knowledge that I've fought and scratched out of the ether for so, so many years of how to create lighting, of how to create a compelling photograph, of how to put all those elements together into a way that people will enjoy it online or in person. And I wanted to do that eight years ago and then somehow just never did. Just never kept coming to Toastmasters, very important part, don't stop going to Toastmasters, but never, never made a video, never did a workshop, never did any of those things until now. So for my project, the final project before my DTM, I put together a video. It was a speech that I actually gave here in which I demonstrated the use of these types of filters right here in front of the camera lens. So it kind of does a little rainbowy effect right there, or this other one has a sort of a crystal thing. And so I recorded a whole speech that I presented here to the club. And then I took that raw data, that raw diamond, we'll say, and I cut and I cut and I polished and I put together a YouTube video. Yeah. Now, because I'm sort of a lone wolf, we'll say, lone wolf, I don't know, lone dog. I'm sorry, Silas. Yeah. I, I usually do things all by myself. So I take on projects that are Tim sized, you know, always. But for this one, because it's a high performance leadership project, I had to incorporate other people and I had to bring other people in, which let me tell you, there's a real growth curve right there. I'm other people. I don't know. I'm not such a fan, to be honest. So what I did, oh, hey everybody. <laughs> so what I did was I put together sort of a loose team and this being pandemic, I called upon everybody I knew all across this great country. And I got different elements that I could use in my video from different places. And I put it together myself just yesterday. So one thing I did was I have a friend who makes a lot of music and really enjoys sort of putting things together in the computer. And so I tapped him to make sort of a theme song for the intro to my YouTube video, because I wanted to make it really slick and I wanted it to be really professional and very, very showy, but not super aggrandizing. So I wanted it to be really clean. So I had him put together this sort of glitchy, like little set of sound effects really that it's only five seconds long. It probably took him about five seconds to do, but I had him put it together and it, and it sounded really great. So I used that as the basis for the logo transition that I have for my intro. So if you ever check out my YouTube video, which I highly recommend, you know, why not? Why not? Why not check it out? If you've got a few minutes to spare, come see my video, learn a thing about cameras. But if you check it out, you'll see that my logo sort of flashes and flickers and jumps around the screen in this really dramatic way. And meanwhile, this guy's awesome, like little sound effect noise goes like that sort of thing. So that was really great bringing somebody in that has skills that I don't really have in order to 
make it look a little bit more polished. Yeah. I have another friend who actually lives here in town and so I was able to meet up with him in person and his partner just wrote a book about relationships and dating and self-published but she has it on Amazon and he and I had a, a long series of discussions about how to choose key phrases in order to push your content to the top of the algorithm. And with this, with discussions for him, we talked about with Amazon specifically, but this, he has this piece of software that he bought that will analyze keywords that are being uses, used to promote similar videos and then words that aren't being used. Thank you, John. So that you can tell right away what's good, what people are gonna search for first of all, and how you can stand out in that pack secondly. So we use this software on YouTube to, to analyze YouTube, to analyze videos that were similar to mine. What phrases were they using in their descriptions? And then what phrases weren't they using? And we found some interesting keywords. Like we found hacking. Nobody was really saying hacking about any of their videos or their techniques that they were describing, but that's exactly what we're doing. Just showing unorthodox ways of using fairly normal techniques. You know, you're taking a piece of plastic and you're putting it in front of a lens. That's pretty, that's a pretty standard technique. But if you do it in an unconventional way, you're hacking it. You know, so using those kinds of key phrases, hopefully will help to push us up the algorithm. It's a little early to tell right now since I just posted it yesterday, but we'll find out and maybe I'll, maybe I'll do a follow-up to the follow-up video. And then I did, this is the, the part of the speech where I talk about things that I wish I had done differently. I did spend way too long on the flickery intro thing. It's fine, it looks good, it's very splashy, and then it jumps right into me talking about the thing that I wanna talk about. But I mean, I spent probably two hours on it and that's not, that's not a good use of my time. I could be doing something else. I could be making a whole other video in that two hour period of time. So. Looking back, I'm glad I did it. I'll probably use it again in the future on other projects, but I could have done it so much easier. It could just be like, boom, there it is. And then we're gone. So that's, that's the thing that I would probably change if I was going to do this again, or I would recommend not doing if you wanna follow in my incredible footsteps and make a YouTube video of your own. Avoid spending too much time on your logo. It's not that, important, I don't think. The content, I think, is far more important. In conclusion, high-performance leaderships, difficult. Getting people on board, especially when they're all across the country, difficult. <laughs> everybody's busy. Everybody has stuff happening right now. All of a sudden, everybody's super hard to get a hold of. But I think working on this project has really gotten me to focus on moving to the next level of what I wanted to do with Toastmasters when I first came to it, which is to create a persona of myself that is myself. You don't want to just want a mask that everybody like just talks to the mask and they don't ever see you behind it. I feel like that's a trap that sometimes I fall into, but actually showing a version of myself to people and letting them see who I really am. I think that's going to be the next step for me personally and for me as a career. And I want to thank everybody. Thank you.